Hi there. Well, following on from uh, my last video post about the art of ground fighting without ground fighting, seems to have upset a few people in the uh, Jiu Jitsu world. Quite a few uh, amusing little emails from people. You know, my instructor can beat the crap out of you. And my instructor would have your ass when he comes to the ground. And, uh, you don't understand BJJ when it's done properly. My instructor, blah, blah, blah. My instructor this and my instructor that. Really? Is that the level that we're at? Let me regress to five years old for a moment. Well, my dad's bigger than your dad. Come on. Let's be sensible for a moment. I did say, did I not, that I have several friends who are what I would consider to be excellent on the ground. And I did mention several times how good they were and what a mess they would make of people when it got there. And I also said they are the very first to say that's not the place to be in a street fight. But anyway, let's be childish, shall we? Unbelievable. It still surprises me that those people are still about. Never mind. Carry on. We can be childish whenever you want. But it brings up a relevant point. Yes, an excellent grappler is going to beat somebody who's not an excellent grappler. A grappler. And an excellent boxer is going to be somebody who's not an excellent boxer a boxing and an excellent taekwondo fighter is going to be a not excellent taekwondo fighter at taekwondo fighting and an excellent judo player is going to be a not excellent judo player at judo you see where it's going you're not thinking correctly and you're not putting things in the right box when you come out with those sort of arguments. Because you're not comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, or BJJ to BJJ or whatever. What you need to understand is that BJJ is brilliant for BJJ. Judo is brilliant for Judo. Taekwondo is brilliant for Taekwondo. Boxing is brilliant for Boxing. But they're not so brilliant against other things. And all sorts of things, you know, you mix and match it any way you like. You know, a boxer's going to struggle against a grappler. A grappler can't box a boxer. And so on and so forth. And all, all of those sort of things come into play. But the important thing here is self-defense. And you don't want to be on the floor in a self-defense situation. If you end up there, you need to be able to control it. You've got to keep your 360. You've got to hope that you've got friends. You've got to hope that they haven't. And yes, there's going to be success stories of going to the floor. Not many. There's also going to be nightmare stories of things that have happened. And thankfully, you know, friends of mine have had nightmare situations which they've got out of and survived. But you don't want to be there. You know, they will tell you that. It's a horrible place to be. When it comes to a sports fight and in the gym, yeah, take them down where you feel safe, where it feels good. And you're not going to face the consequences of being there. That's it. You would do that. Of course you will. And in a sports fight, of course you will. No problem with that. I've already said that's what you would do. And, you know, how much I enjoy combat sports, MMA is a brilliant sport and appreciate the fact that some people are superb on the ground and what they can do but it still doesn't get away from the fact that that landing on there tends to work pretty good and when you smack somebody hard enough they go to sleep so striking in my mind for self-defense is so much more important than grappling. 
massively more important. Grappling teaches you so much. Not disputing any of that. I'm talking for self-defense purposes. Grappling you can get by without ever knowing. But you can't get by self-defense situations without going out and throw a punch. Because you, you're just not going to survive it. So this is why we place such a strong emphasis on getting your striking as good as possible. Because it's brilliant for take home type stuff. You know, even if you're only doing a few months of training, if you've got some good strikes behind you, you're going to be able to defend yourself in most self defense situations. I know people with many, many years of karate experience who still couldn't quite sleep when it comes to a self defense situation. And I know people who are pretty good at grappling who couldn't quite sleep when it comes to a self defense situation. High level, high level, you know, karate people, high level jiu jitsu people. So when it comes to self defense, they couldn't quite sleep. But here's the thing if you've got striking, you've got a real good chance. Or well, you've got more of a chance. And like I said, one good punch will do it for you. Or maybe two. But grappling on its own. It's not going to work for you in a, in a self-defense situation. Sports fighting, yes, of course you can. It's without dispute. Never once disputed that. Is it easier just to punch him in the face and get it over and done with? Yeah. A lot easier than rolling around on the floor for 10 to 15 minutes. So, yeah, let's get things into perspective here. Anyway, I won't keep going on, but thanks for the insults and, you know, it's good to be childish now and again. Keeps us all young, doesn't it? And uh, keep the questions coming. I've got a few more to answer. And uh, see you next time. Thanks very much.